Your community of choir, senior choir, community of voices, please round of applause. Hey, hey, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, choirs. I think we are fine. Everyone, could you please uh, try to, we have enough uh, chairs for people to seat. We would love for you to uh, be able to uh, take the spaces. Yes. Okay, let's start. I am so delighted, so honored to be standing here today. My name is Linda Fadiki Richardson. I am on the board of the Bayview Hornets Point Multipurpose Senior Center, also the chair of the groundbreaking and ribbon cutting ceremony. I want to give honor to God. Let me repeat. I want to give honor to God for the opportunity for me to be standing here today on the podium with a mayor and all the dignitaries, and with the community I'm looking out. I see Dr. George Davis' family. I see just about everyone. This is a great day for Baby Hunters Point. This is a great day for the community. Where there is vision, people do not perish. The late Dr. George Davis was a man that is responsible, was responsible for bringing all of us here today. His vision was to ensure that our seniors have a place that they could live and die gracefully. He networked, reached out to a lot of people in this city. It has taken decades for us to get here. But look at where we are today. In his absence, that vision and legacy, folks, are being realized today. I want to especially thank the mayor, Lee, for his presence because if you look across this city, this kind of setting is taking place, even though you don't read about it. All over the city, this man has a passion to help seniors, to help youth, and he's doing it all over and all over. And so it's left to all of us to make sure that we help to publicize the kind of things that are here, and that we're trying to help him get this record straight. But you know what? We are going to do that. And so without any further ado, I am going to bring uh, on stage, we are expecting Mayor Willie Brown. Okay. Right oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. You see, we, we held everything until he got here. <laughs> Mayor Willie Brown, as always, a fine gentleman, a leader of this city. Thank you so much, sir, for your presence, for bailing us out over and over again. And you've made your time, even for the little people, to come out every time to make events like this happen. We thank you and may God continue to bless you. Now you are the next person on the agenda because you are going to help us to get this program you know, going. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Linda. It was a pleasure to have you as part of the group of people who over the years have been given the proper approval to each one of the steps that have been taken to make this particular place what it is today. And for those of you that have not had an opportunity to see it, you are on the inside. You will not want to leave. Uh, the nature of each one of the living spaces, uh, the kinds of things that have been done.
I can't believe it. Caltrain would do that to me. <laughs> the nature of the space, though, in the way in which it has been incredibly planned and executed, I got to tell you that I came out here on more than one occasion as the process was unfolding because I had been so much part of the original effort that George had made to address the needs of seniors in the Bay Area, and in particular in the Bayview part of the Bay Area. George worked for me when I served in the state legislature, and one of his obligations was to pay attention and do something and move the city to be responsible to the needs of the people in this community, particularly seniors. And the vision always was there was going to be a campus, a senior campus, and it was going to have some of everything. Well, George, you got to know that that is exactly what's out here. I came, I, I got to tell you that as it was unfolding, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would come out here and, and, and you'd see uh, women doing the painting uh, on the scaffolding. I didn't even know there were any women painters in the Painters Union. Uh, and they were black doing the painting. And they were having a good time doing it. Music was being played. Michael Bain was serving coffee. It was amazing the nature of how uh, this all unfolded. And believe me, I would wander through to see what was here and see what was there. And then I'd run into Kathy. And the architects were just obliterated. Because every time they came up with what they thought was a perfect design, Kathy would instruct them that it wasn't perfect, and that it had to be changed, and it had to be redirected and redone. And she's got a kitchen in there that you're gonna die for. That kitchen could feed everybody at, on one setting that Glide feeds three times a day. It is just that incredibly impressive. The senior center is in the same way. And then there is a quiet room. Mr. Mayor, there's a space where you and I could go contemplate, and it's, <laughs> It's the George room. It's the George Davis room. And it's got his chair in there. So the spirit of everything that everybody wanted to do is absolutely right here on this occasion. And this is a real celebration. Thank you, the city of San Francisco. And I'm just delighted to be a part of the ceremony. Before we go too much further, though, we better have some prayer. Um, uh, we better have some prayer. I, I, I need some prayer. So I don't know about the rest of you, but after last night, I need some prayer. Um, and, and so, Reverend, come on over here. You are George's pastor, yes. uh, and um, you must bring him in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Let every heart pray. Father God, we thank you for giving us Dr. George Davis the vision to build this senior citizen complex some 25 years ago when the center was broke and on top of that you called him home about eight years ago when the dream was just in its embryonic stage. Some of us became discouraged but he left his widow here, Kathy Davis, who was endowed with the same vision. And she was in, enabled to inspire others to get a glimpse of this vision and come together in unity and bring it to fruition. And that is why we are so grateful that we are able to stand here right now, this moment, with scissors in our hands to cut the ribbon that would allow us to go in and really show our gratitude for what you have enabled us to accomplish. But surely there is much more work that needs to be done here in the southeast sector of this great city, San Francisco. So we are praying that you give us all a vision 
just as you did with Dr. Davis, and also with your great saint, St. Francis of Assisi, that this great city was named after. Give us that type of faith that we also can pray the way he prayed. Lord, grant that I may be able to work in your vineyard. Where there is injury, let me sow seeds of pardon. Where there is hatred, love. Where there is darkness, light. For it is in giving that we receive. So Lord grant that I may not so much seek to be loved as to love, to be understood as to understand, to be comfortable as to comfort. For it is in giving that we receive and it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mr. Mayor, it was January of 1996, and we were all together um, in front of the Martin Luther King Fountain, and it was a dreary day, not one as magnificent as this. But when Reverend Walker got up and said prayers, the sun started shining, <laughs> and it's been shining since then. Reverend Walker. To the Honorable Willie Brown, whom we all respect and love. To the distinguished mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, Mayor Ed Lee. To outstanding distinguished guests that are visiting with us uh, on today. I would like to at this time, call all of the members of the board of directors to come and stand with me. Come and stand with me. And I will introduce them one by one in a few minutes. Just a few compliments I'd like to make. And to all of my fellow citizens of the city of St. Francis, by the way of the Golden Gate and the Bay Bridge, and you cannot, San Francisco, as we know, is a world-class city. You cannot have a world-class city except you have a world-class leadership. You cannot have a world-class city except you have a world-class Bayview, Hunters Point. And the Senior Service Center itself. Well, there goes the train again. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you uh, the board members, the vice president, Miss Ollie Mixon, <laughs> treasurer, Dr. Caesar Churchwell, <laughs> our main fundraiser, this head of our fundraising committee, Melvin, Reverend Melvin Hall. And the person that helped and drew and pulled this program together, structured and organized with a person over our personnel committee, Linda Richardson. <laughs> and I overlook one gentleman that's on the board, the president, and that is Aurelius Walker. <laughs> Also, I'd like for the very effective and uh, person that get things done and move people, Kathy Davis, to come and stand. She is the effective mover, executive director of this particular program. That we're, the reason why we're here today. And I want 
everybody that are here to understand. And you don't have to talk about it anymore. You can look around at the reflection all around us that this board stepped up and took advantage and made sure this would happen on today. And Kathy, out leading, giving us direction, and we want, I want everybody, if you be so kind, if you're incapacitated, you don't have to stand. But if you're not incapacitated, I'd like for everybody to stand and give this board and Kathy a great round of applause. I believe you can do a little better than that. You can do a little better than that. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I would like to leave this point with you. Upon one occasion, there was a daughter and a father. They was on one of our major freeways going to do business for the family. And all of a sudden, a terrible, horrific storm arose. And the wind and the rain and the lightning was, uh, was, was so boisterous until cars began to pull over and stop. And the daughter said, Dad, should I pull over and stop? He said, keep driving. After a while, the big wheelers and the large trucks began to pull over uh, and stop. She said, Dad, the big wheelers, the large trucks are pulling over and stop. Why don't we stop? He said, keep driving, daughter. And after a while, they drove out of the storm. They drove beyond the storm. The sun was shining like it is today. And the dad said, daughter, pull over. She said, Dad, I mean, we are, we are beyond the storm. He said, I said, pull over. They pulled over. Then he said, let's get out of the car. They got out of the car, walked back uh, to the back of the car. I said, he said, daughter, I want you to look back. The storm is still happening back there. But because you kept driving, we drove out of the storm. And my point for raising that is we had some storms. We had some storms to get where we are today. But Brother Walker, Pastor Walker, Dr. Walker said, keep driving. So in turn, we kept driving, and we're here today. Thank you. A mini sermon, but nevertheless, a sermon. <laughs> it's now my great pleasure to have uh, the man who literally picked up what other mayors had started and could not complete because they didn't keep driving. But he kept driving, Reverend Walker. And we are now in the sunshine. And we're celebrating because Ed Lee steadied the ship and kept us headed in the right direction. Mayor Ed Lee. Hello, Bayview. Well, uh, I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, obviously, my good friend, Mayor Willie Brown, 1996, it's been 10 years since he had that dream and discussion. And what I wanted uh, people to know is something that I've often said when I'm down in the Bayview. We're not doing anything new. Even though this is new housing and a new center, we're here to fulfill old promises in this city. Is that right? And I know back in 1996 or somewhere close to that, Mayor Brown tapped me and said, if you want to be on this team, we got to get stuff done. And that's kind of a few years later, he tapped me for the hardest job I ever had, Department of Public Works, all in one fell swoop on the steps of City Hall, interview, appointment, all in two minutes. And my head was still swirling since that time. But all in the spirit of saying that if you help us get the promises done, don't make any new promises, get the ones done. And for the Bayview and particularly for 
our communities here, the promises that we've been making around equity, around equal access to jobs, around decent housing for our seniors and our families. These are not new promises of the city. These are old promises, and it's taking a long time to get here. And yes, 10 years is a heck of a long time to fulfill a promise, but we're glad we're here, and we're glad we're fulfilling other promises at the same time. Because look around, Bayview is not what it was 10 years ago. And I've got a goal of 30,000 housing units in the city, guaranteed, half of them affordable to families and low income. We're on our way. You look at what's happening. What's happening in the shipyards today, under construction? What's happening in Alice Griffith, under construction? What's happening in Hunter's Point? Hunter's View, Westbrook, shipyards, candlestick, all under construction. We are fulfilling old promises and getting things done. And we will always want your help. We're not doing this alone. And I'm here to say, Kathy Davis, keep bugging my office. <laughs> keep coming in. Keep telling me, which, I mean, Willie used to do this. He used to call in people and say, which of my bureaucracies ain't working? And I've learned that lesson well because as a student of Willie Brown's, I'm calling in a lot of community. You tell me what's not working. You tell me who's not doing the job. And we'll recreate it. Just as we're recreating our housing authority, never to be isolated poverty housing ever again in partnership with HUD. So thank you, Housing Authority. Thank you, HUD. Thank you, Leader Pelosi, for all your wonderful leadership. I want to be, I want to be with Leader Pelosi on the, on, the, on the floor of Congress because we need to end gun violence in this, in this country. We need to do that. And I also want to say thank you to Mark Leno, because we're working at the state level, and with his help, we were able to get the governor to release another $500 million to San Francisco for affordable housing, working with our new redevelopment agency, OCII. We're doing that. We're getting things done in all of these areas, including the private sector, and we are getting people jobs at the same time. Well-deserved family, uh, oriented jobs for everybody. So I want to say thank you to the community. Thank you to the partnerships like McCory McBaron, Salazar. Thank you to HUD. Thank you to all of the agencies, Willie Brown. And thank you for allowing us as a city to fulfill the wonderful legacy of Dr. Davis. Thank you for being here today. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for your study and uh, responsiveness uh, to the needs of this section of San Francisco as well as many other sections of San Francisco. And you mentioned the name of a developer, um, Tony Salazar. Tony, you better come on up here because you have been responsible for this. My guess is that uh, working with Kathy working with Olson Lee, working with the city, and working with Michael Bain, you didn't make a nickel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are right, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't going to say that, but I'm glad you brought it up. And, um, and if there's the time to renegotiate. Um, I'll handle oh, you it. Have, yeah. I'll handle it. Please. Please, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Let me, let me say that, uh, you know, it, it, they say it takes a village to, to, raise a, to raise a child, but it takes a really strong, committed, compassionate village, uh, like the one Mr., uh, Mayor Lee is creating in this city, to care for seniors and to help them grow and thrive as seniors should continue uh, in, in a very comfortable fashion. But, you know, someone has to build that village, Mr. Mayor. Someone has to plant it design it, operate it, maintain it, 
and that would be me. Uh, and it, it takes uh, a lot of people to, to do that, and I'm going to introduce a lot of people here in a minute. But before I do, I want to just say a couple of things about um, uh, me standing here on a personal note. Uh, as, uh, during the groundbreaking that many of you were here, I, I shared the story of uh, meeting George Davis, Dr. Davis, uh, him inviting me to, uh, to San Francisco and talking about uh, his vision and wanting someone to take his vision and turn it into reality. Um, and after multiple visits and multiple meetings and playing pool and playing dominoes and eating peach cobbler, you know, after about the fourth meeting, he finally said, you're my developer. You're going to do this. Um, and I said, and at that point, I was questioning whether, you know, I really wanted to do this. But, uh, and then he says, you've got to go meet with my board. And then I met, met with the board. And then they weren't, you know, they're saying, who is this guy coming up from L.A., this Mexican guy? You know, we're trying to have it an all African-American thing, you know. And, I'm, and, and after three or four meetings with the board, they finally say, well, you're close enough. <laughs> you, 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 you can be our partner. And, and I, I, just want, I just wanted to share that with you because um, there was a vision created, and my job was to translate that vision into this. And it's, it's, it, it was very hard when George passed uh, because I didn't have anybody to ask the question about him. Is this the right, is this what it's supposed to look like? Is this supposed to what it feel like? What's the, the colors? I had Kathy Davis, fortunately, to be my partner and to, and to help turn that vision into reality. But it takes a lot, it takes a village to build a village. And, and I, I just want to share, I, I just want to acknowledge people here that are here today. There's a lot of people's fingerprints on this building. Um, and David Baker was the architect. Uh, and, 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 and there's several people here. I think Kevin Wilcock and Amit Patel. The contractor was uh, with Baines Nibby, uh, joint venture with Michael Baines, and Bob Nibby is here, uh, an old friend. Uh, we've done lots of work together. You, th this city is very fortunate uh, to have these kinds of professionals here and, and to make sure these kinds of things happen. Um, Mr. Mayor, they could not have done it without your departments staying focused on it, you know, the, office, the, the Mayor's Office of Housing, uh, OCII, Olson Lee, Pam Sims is here. Elizabeth Camello, um, and Tiffany Bohe. These people should all be raising their hands, because when you see them, you need to be thanking them uh, for, for their commitment to getting these kinds of things done. Also, the City Department of Public Health, uh, Margo, Margo Antonini, uh, the Housing Authority. Uh, my old colleague and friend Barbara Smith is here, um, and Nicole McCray Dickerson was very helpful. Um, I also want to thank uh, my, my, our nonprofit partners, uh, the Bayview Hunters Point Multipurpose Senior Service Center. Um, they, are, they are not only our nonprofit partner, development partner in this, they're providing the social services. Uh, so they're playing a big role. Kathy Davis, thank you very much for being a partner, a business partner, as well as a spiritual partner and getting the, helping get these things done. Uh, I just want to, I just want to, uh, the, the people I want to uh, acknowledge last are, are just, uh, you know, we're managing this property, and, and Stephanie Birch is here. She's the property manager. But also, the people who spent day to day, every day, working on getting this project done from our staff and McCormick Baron Salazar. Yusef Freeman is here. Uh, Yusef, where are you today? Oh, there he is right there. Stand up, Yusef. I'm telling you, that is one of the smartest, most intelligent, tallest, handsomest guy <laughs> that, that you've ever met. And he's a, he's a great asset to San Francisco. Daniela Graville was here, Hans Bruder, uh, and Maricela Flores uh, is, is also here uh, who worked on this project. I want to thank all these individuals for, for giving everything they had. Uh, lastly, I am hopeful and I, and I pray that Dr. Davis is looking down on us today and, and is pleased with what he sees. Um, 
I am hopeful that um, uh, that I and all these professionals that I introduced you to, um, I hope that we exceeded his expectations because we did. We worked hard, not just to give him uh, his vision, but to exceed his vision. Um, and fin finally, I just want to wish good health and much happiness to all the seniors who enter this building, who live here. And, uh, and I want to thank, uh, thank the city, Mr. Mayor, for the opportunity to, to bring my skills to your town. Thank you all. And of course, this structure and all of the efforts made by all of the people that Tony described, and in particular the city, there had to be a reach out to a private sector part. And reaching out to the private sector part is always easiest when it's somebody whom you had hired yesterday and they've moved on to the private sector, but they still owe you. <laughs> Fred Blackwell owes us. And Fred Blackwell stepped up when Kathy called, and he did what the San Francisco Foundation should do. They brought some money. Fred Blackwell. You didn't show up last night, but didn't you? you didn't show up last night. But... Um, thank you for that great uh, introduction. It's really uh, a pleasure to be here. As Mayor Brown has referred to, and a, a bunch of other people have talked about, and you can actually see uh, when you look at this, um, Kathy and the team and McCormick, Bear, and Salazar uh, paid a lot of attention to um, what this needed to look like, whether it was uh, the paint, the design, the kitchen, uh, the units, the courtyard. Uh, it's a fabulous building. But that's not what I want to really talk about. Um, what I want to talk about is what you don't see uh, in terms of the commitments that were made here. Uh, because Kathy Davis uh, knew a few things uh, about how this project needed to move forward. Uh, and one of the things that she knew uh, was that just because a building looks good, just because it's affordable, just because it has great services inside and is well designed, does not necessarily mean that it is good for the community. Uh, what she knew was that when the people moved in here and when they were building this, that if they weren't participating in building it, if they didn't see uh, it as theirs, uh, if the people who had lived through the years of challenge in the Bayview couldn't live here, this would just be a monument that says, look at all this good stuff that's not for you. So Kathy, before the financing was in place, before the first dirt was turned for the ground, groundbreaking, was working on making sure that this was a building, this was a project that represented what Bayview wanted to see uh, and that would be viewed as something that was theirs. She did aggressive outreach. She worked to find certificate of preference holders that had been uh, done wrong uh, in prior uh, development projects and moved from this city and didn't have the opportunity to participate in and benefit from projects that were going on in the Western Edition in the Bayview. She came to us and asked for support to do legal analysis to know how far she could go to do that outreach and make it race specific without breaking the law. Okay? And she worked with the Board of Supervisors to even pass policies that would allow for <laughs> neighborhood preferences to be put in place so that when the housing opened, it would be reflective like it is right now when I look out here, the community that she knew needed the benefit from this the most. So it, it is for that that I actually thank Kathy and the team uh, and everybody's vision and hard work to make sure that this was something that everybody could participate in and benefit from. Uh, and I don't quote a whole lot of singers and rappers all the time, but I have to say Montel Jordan's song, This Is How We Do It, <laughs> comes to mind uh, in terms of other folks who are thinking about doing this stuff in the future. Thank you, Kathy. You know, I knew that he would not be able to finish his remarks without going straight to rapid. 
What he always wanted to be was a rapper. He never wanted to be the executive that he is or any of those things. And if you can't find him on any time anybody is performing in this town, go to where they're performing. I don't care how big they are, how little they are. This is one dedicated musician. <laughs> Talented in many ways. We, we really thank you. And your ascendancy to the throne of the San Francisco Foundation clearly has uh, been of great benefit, not to just this community, but to all the communities, because you came from having run the agencies and some agencies in housing in San Francisco. And Mary Lee is really fortunate uh, to have you. And to have your friendship with Kathy Davis evidence itself in the way in which it has here simply means that it's now time for us to hear from the woman who gives the orders. Kathy Davis. Thanks, everybody. And um, first of all, I just want to thank um, the board of directors who gave me this wonderful job. It's my second favorite job. My first favorite job is being Mrs. Davis. And today I get to be Mrs. Davis to honor what my husband wanted to see here. So I want to thank the board for giving me that opportunity. And I also want to thank the most amazing staff that pulls out of nowhere these amazing events and things that we do and just brings all this heart and love. So thank you to all my staff because you make it happen, not really me. I just give orders, as uh, Mayor Brown just said. Um, and I also want to thank Mayor Brown because he's been the wind beneath this agency's wings for many, many, many years. You didn't make the groundbreaking. You never go in the hospital. You're never sick. And that one day, you were in the hospital. Otherwise, he would have been here. So we didn't get to give you your award, Mayor Brown. And we want to give you our groundbreaking thank you award. Because you're the one, Mr. Mayor. And we totally appreciate it. And we said we'd wait till the grand opening to give you yours. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> you deserve it. OK. Um, I have to run real fast, because we're supposed to be done by 11. That may not happen. But we're going to get close. So first of all, the Davis family is in the house. Raise your hand, Davis family. There they are. My brother-in-law, Wesley, is here from Las Vegas. My brother is here from Orlando. My brother is here from North Carolina. My grandkids over here, the whole Davis clan is here. They always supported their Uncle George, their grandpa, and I want to thank them for that and for always having my back. I also want to thank my Metropolitan Church family because that little church has been praying for me and George ever since we started on this project. So I want to thank them, Reverend Riddick, and my church family for having my back. Every time I go and cry in church, they pray with me. So thank you. I also want to acknowledge the people who built this building, who did a beautiful, amazing job. Five architects later, thousands of meetings, a lot of harassment, but we got where we needed to go together, and they always held together on the dream. So I want to thank Tony. I want to take, thank McCormick Barron. I want to thank um, the Nibby brothers, Bob Nibby. I want to thank Mike Baines. Homegrown Hunters Point came out here to do something good for his community. I want to thank all the architects, David Baker, Micah Willis, Skelfin Partners. I mean, we had a lot of love poured into this building. And I also want to thank the guys in the trenches who actually built this and Sam Adams was the one guy who started this job and ended this job so thank you Sam wherever you are appreciate you till the last day he was here I also want to thank and we have lots of them to thank my partners over here from the Housing Authority the Mayor's Office of Community Development OCII 
Oh, see, I were the cheerleaders, by the way. Tiffany was always cheering me on. And I just want to thank them for all the bureaucratic work they had to do. It was not easy for them, and I didn't make it any easier. So I want to thank you for what you did to make it happen. And I know it was hard, I know it's challenging, and we fought a lot of battles, but we are here, and I just really want to thank you all for helping us. And lastly, Olson Lee, who I say made the promise to Dr. Davis, just looked him in the eye and says, yes, George, we're going to make that happen. And Olson, you made it happen. Thank you. Okay, we also have some wonderful neighbors. We have great neighbors in Bayview Hunters Point. Right across the street are our condo owners who support us in everything that we do, the 58, 5900 Third Street neighbors. We had Ashley Furniture down there on Bayshore. They were giving us discounts so we could buy furniture for the seniors. We have Comcast helping out our seniors in the neighborhood. And my best friend, Rick Holiday, who stopped by the other day and said, Kathy, you need some money for the groundbreaking? Here's a check. You can't get a better friend than Rick Holiday, right? <laughs> now you're going to be everybody's friend, Rick, just so you know. But you are my friend. Thank you so much for that. I also want to talk about a little bit about housing advocacy because the San Francisco Foundation did help us really look at everything we could think of to try to help the neighborhood get in this building. And besides Fred and the San Francisco Foundation, there were these two guys who worked for the mayor's office who constantly helped me, get, gave me a little bit of hope when I, when I couldn't figure out what to do. I would call them. They had my back. And that is Theo Miller and his buddy Paul Henderson. I don't see Paul, but Paul is homegrown Bayview and he's running for judge and you should vote for the man. He's great. So um, Theo and Paul used to have a lot of conversations with me about what, what could we do? What is possible within all these, you know, bureaucratic nightmares we were going through? And I really, I couldn't have done it without you, Theo. Really, thank you. Um, also on the housing advocacy side, we have the president of the Board of Supervisors here, London Bree. And you don't get any tougher or more dedicated about housing than London Bree. She fought hard, put her political will out there, and got the neighborhood preference for the community. Now, we didn't get it for this one, but we got one for Willie B. Kennedy Apartments. Because of her and her efforts and Supervisor Cohen and Supervisor Weiner, those three worked together and made that preference happen. Political will is what it takes. You have to want to do it. So I appreciate you for that, London. You, you did an awesome job, and we are so excited to say in the next week there are going to be applications over at Rosa Parks 2, which is now being called Willie B. Kennedy Senior Apartments. So I want to see all the seniors, because we did have like 4,000 people apply here. Not everybody got in, obviously. So come see us. We'll put you on the next list. We're looking for certificate of preference holders and people from the neighborhood to apply. And we'll know about that in a week or so. And then there's going to be a three-week process. For everybody that didn't know, we applied back in October. If you didn't hit that application period, you're out. So you got to listen, you got to pay attention, and you got to do the work to get on those application lists. I also want to thank um, Shireen McSpadden. Shireen, you're here. Who's a, she's homegrown Bayview, by the way. She started the Network for Elders, and now she is the director of the Department on Aging, which totally funds our agency, the projects we do in Bayview and Western Edition. And we appreciate you, Shireen. And we are very excited because I know Supervisor Cohen's going to talk about this. We have what we call the Dignity Fund. And we're going to have a ballot measure where we're going to double the amount of money that goes to senior services in San Francisco in November. So you all got to get behind that and get behind Supervisor Cohen, who stuck her neck out just like Supervisor Breed and used some political will to make that happen. So we appreciate that, Supervisor Cohen. I know I missed a lot of things. I, I have so many things to say to thank people. But I just want to thank all of the, the staff, the volunteers, and the seniors. The seniors who stuck in there with us, filled out all those applications, did all of that work, made it all happen. You are the reason why we do what we do. 
So thank you. I know we have some senior residents in the house. If you're a senior resident, raise your hand because we're going to have a few more coming up. And we are so excited to have them be here. Now I'm also going to be uh, giving, we have some awards for people who have helped us out. And if you look on the back of your program, it says it takes a village to build and fulfill a dream. And we are grateful to those listed below who helped us to get from groundbreaking to ground opening. So if your name is on here, we have something for you. The seniors made you an award because you made our building happen. We have an award for you. We don't have time to give them all out right now, but we want everyone to know they're made with love by the seniors for you to thank you. We have people like Pam Sims, who from beginning to end was always there with us. Pam, you deserve 50 of those awards for just hanging in there with us. I don't know where she is, but thank you, Pam. And I just want to thank everybody on this list. I can't say all your names, and I probably forgot somebody, and I apologize already because I probably did. But I just want to thank all the people on this list who helped us make this happen. For my husband and, and I, this was always something we wanted to see be, be part of the community. And he was always about hope. He was always positive. He gave us the vision, and he never quit. And what is here today is a testimony to Dr. George Davis. And what he said to me when he lost his vision, and I was all worried, like, what's he going to do now? He can't see. And he said, we walk by faith, not by sight. That was George Davis. That was the man who taught me what I needed to know to be able to do what I'm doing now. And I'll be forever grateful to be his wife, to be a part of his life, and to thank all of you for this. Corn, you have the worst job in the world. You got to follow Kathy. <laughs> but I know you're able to do exactly that. District 10 supervisor, and for the last almost uh, seven years, eight years, six years, she has been working beyond. I think Ed Lee arranges for the train <laughs> to interrupt me for some reason. I don't know what it is. But for the years that she served on the board, she's been working with the board of directors on every call and with Kathy on every call. And before that, she was employed by the city in the Newsom administration. And this was one of the items that eventually got the go ahead to happen, and Malia was called upon to do that. And she is clearly from the neighborhood. Uh, I met her at uh, Lowell High School. I was a student. <laughs> we were fellow students at <laughs> Lowell High School. Ladies and gentlemen, Supervisor Malia Cohen. Thank you. That was, that was clever. Very, very clever. <laughs> Good afternoon, family. I think today, please bear with us, I know these are long speeches, but today is an opportunity for us to pour out our hearts to you, particularly the Davis family, just to take a moment to express our gratitude um, and how much this building app represents. Not only is it housing seniors, people who have raised their children, people who have grown up in the community, raised their children in the community. It was also built by Baby Hunters Point community people. I mean, it's just incredible. I want to um, take a moment and I want to recognize um, Jeff Adachi, our public defender, who's also here. I don't think he was recognized. He's working hard. I want to also recognize Shimon Walton from the school board, vice president. We've got Derek Brown from the mayor's office as well, who deserves acknowledgement. I also want to acknowledge our housing authority 
representatives, not the staff, but the, vo the volunteer force behind it. Joyce Armstrong, the Gans from the Tenants Association, thank you very much. They're always with us every step of the way. And I haven't seen this lady, but Dr. Veronica Honeycutt, she deserves a stellar applause and recognition. Pam Sims. Um, and I also want to recognize the community leaders, Sammy Hastings, Tyra Fennell, I saw you guys out there. Also the representatives from the 5800 and 5900 HOA. That's the HOA that live in these buildings over here. You know what they did? They, put, they pulled their resources together and they made welcome kits for the seniors for each and every unit that, that we are going to be opening up today. So I'm actually absolutely happy and delighted and filled to be here at this grand, grand opening today at this incredible building named after a saint, Dr. George W. Davis. This senior center, which includes 120 units, that's no easy feat to get built in this city. 120 units right here in Bayview Hunters Point. Mayor Lee talked about his vision uh, for rolling out and bringing these units online. That means nothing if we don't have the resources to buy them, to rent them, and we don't have the knowledge. And we need to stick together when it comes to that. Just two years ago, many of you, was, many of you were gathered here right in this spot, it was dirt, we had shovels, and um, as you can look behind me, you can see what two years makes, a difference. It's been a dream, not mine personally. It's been a dream that I've actually inherited. My role in the Board of Supervisors has been to carry this 20-year dream, this vision that Dr. Davis had to the finish line. And, um, and here we are. It's come to, to full fruition. Kathy is an incredible partner. You, the Davis family should be proud of the accomplishments. The community should be proud. Kathy is a nuisance. <laughs> she calls you, and when, she, when you don't answer, she'll text you early in the morning and late at night. But you know what, that's the kind of nuisance we all need to be, because that's what gets things done. That is a commitment that's unwavering. And it is because of this level of commitment that um, our community benefits. And it means that we are, this building and some of the legislation that we're bringing forward means that we are respecting seniors. Seniors, people whose shoulders that we stand on every single day. Remember Willie B. Kennedy? She was a soldier for this community for many, many years. Many years. So there are many things that we have passed in the budget. I'm really excited to announce that we are going to be having exercise classes. Kathy left no detail undone in this, for this building, in this facility. It means that um, young people, grandchildren, will have, be able to stay connected to their family. There's something valuable well, about when, you, when you're a grandparent and you're able to impart knowledge about, on, on your grandchildren right here in home. This, um, this building hits all the core tenets, I think, uh, that are the values of San Francisco, generational opportunity for everyone, particularly calling out the African American community. The detail in this building reflects African culture, from the color palette of the buildings on the inside and the outside to the structure, to the layout, to the art that you will find. It's an opportunity for those of us that are part of the African diaspora to rejoice and shout and be proud and be glad. Our history is represented. And not only I think it's important that we talk about the history, I was also successful in earmarking money to, to ensure that we see an African presence in the Bayview community. You will start to see physical manifestations. You know how when you go to North Beach, you see the flag of the Italian flag? You're gonna to start to see some changes here in Bayview Hunters Point along the Third Street Corridor. So, you know, it's really, uh, I grew up here in San Francisco, and um, it's for that reason that I work incredibly hard. Um, Kathy r briefly touched on the neighborhood preference legislation. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this legislation is paramount. This is going to change the face of not only the community here in San Francisco, but in the entire part of San Fr entire parts of San Francisco. This means that 40% of everything that is built goes to people that are from the neighborhood. 40%. And that was not easy. We all wanted it to be close to 50. I think it was Fred that said, Kathy Davis dances in the line very dangerously close to what's legal and what's illegal. 
dangerously. But she got a whole host of people that's dancing with her that are our champions. Mayor Lee, thank you for helping us get that pass. Supervisor and President Bree, thank you for being my partner and ensuring that we got 40% of any affordable units that are being built. That, that means that this community, whose families contributed to this growth of this community, have an opportunity to stay. And I think that's the real issue that we feel in this community. Now, the Dignity Fund is something that you guys need to be looking out for because this is also just as important. The Dignity Fund is another fight that we are just going to be bringing to the voters, and it's simple. It says that if you live in this city and that, and that you want to remain in the city and you're a senior, we're going to set aside money and services for you so that you will no longer be vulnerable to eviction, no longer vulnerable to, um, to, to lacking services home support services, food services, and it just doesn't stop with the senior community, those that have, disab those that have disabilities, those that are HIV and age po HIV positive will also be benefiting. This is our response to what we are hearing from the senior and the disability community. This is incredibly important because the data shows that by 2030, over 100,000 people, senior population are gonna be living with us and we need to prepare now for them so that they can age in place and that's a way that we can show our love and commitment to them. Now we're talking about $800 million over 20 years. $800 million. If that don't make you applaud, I don't know what will because that sure is a heck of a lot of money. So look for it on a ballot uh, near you. I want to recognize um, Dr. Williams Walker and his lovely wife. They're celebrating 48 years of service to the baby community. 48 years this man has been serving our community. Thank you very much. And um, Dr. Churchwell has also served us well. And Mrs. Millie Ox uh, uh, Mixon has also served us well on the board. Thank you. And I want to also recognize a man that has been with us, been with the African American community since day one, since he was a member of the Board of Supervisors, since he's rounding out his tenure at the State House as State Senator Mark Leno. He has been with us, fighting for us, advocating, and assisting us every step of the way. Please welcome State Senator Mark Leno. Say hello to everyone real quickly. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, as Willie Brown would tell you, everything has been said, not yet by, by everybody. Uh, but I will be brief. Dr. George Davis was a mentor of mine. And this day, for me, is all about him and all of those he led. And what I learned from Dr. Davis was really, in my public policy making, to be ever sensitive to our senior population for all the reasons that we know, but too often they are overlooked. And I want to thank Supervisor Cohn for her Dignity Fund, taking this to the ballot and asking the voters of San Francisco to support our seniors, not only in word, but in deed. And at a time decades ago, when the state was building more and more prisons and passing more and more laws to put more and more people behind bars for longer periods of time, Dr. Davis was visionary because he was recognizing that 90% 90, 90 of our inmates are coming out. What becomes of them when they return to our communities? And so he knew that there would be need for ex-offender programs to support them and their families and they need housing as well. And that is all about safer communities. Few people saw that then. It's now coming into fashion today. So I learned a lot from Dr. Davis. And I also learned from Dr. Davis, never be come between Kathy Davis and her vision and her passion. It's a dangerous place to be. But it's been a real pleasure working with Kathy. When she called me to say, Mark, you've got to shake some dollars loose from that governor of ours. He's closing down the redevelopment agencies, and some of that money is ours, and I need it for this project. We got some tens of millions of dollars. So thank you, Kathy, for being on my tail all the way. So I think we all recognize that the foundation stone 
of what we're ribbon cutting today is the power of love. And it started with the love of Dr. Davis that he had and continues to have in his memory for this community and for the most vulnerable in this community and his love for his wife and the love of his wife for him and his memory. That's what got us to build this building and to bring us to this ribbon cutting today. I told Kathy when she gave me a tour just the other day that I wanted to be a leaf on that donor tree of life. And then she told me what it was going to cost me. <laughs> Kathy, the check is in the mail. No, I mean it. I, I, you will see my name as a leaf on that donor tree. So what a beautiful community, the strength, the passion, the commitment, the tenacity manifested in this beautiful new building for all the right reasons. My thanks. <laughs> so Kathy, I know you have your bathroom walls covered with these proclamations that I bring to you each year. Brought one for the groundbreaking. I'm here to complete the project today. A little love from the California State Senate. Resolution not only suitable for framing, it's framed. And I will spare you all the witty and wonderful whereas's clauses, but the resolve clause is that you and this community make the state of California so very proud in your ongoing, never-ending commitment to the low-income seniors. We thank you. I don't have enough talk <laughs> Mark, thank you very much, and I'm delighted. Uh, I was in there looking at uh, the leaves on that tree, and I didn't see your name. Now I'm going to go back and look again, because I know it's going to be there. Uh, and some of the rest of you, when you do tour the building, you really have got to stop and take a look, because that tree grows bigger and bigger every day. And I assume that at some point, it's going to take over that whole wall, but only if you make a donation. And the amount of your donation uh, can be, you know, whatever it is, but you may, you may make it and you may not. So be careful about how much you think you can give. But the people who live here, though, uh, when Kathy called and told me that it's finished, we got the certificate of occupancy, and I came right out. And what did I see? The first cat moving in. And I thought he really should say something today. Walter, come on up here. Walter, come on up here. Here is a man who lives in this new George Davis Senior Housing. Walter. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I stand in front of you this afternoon grateful and happy and thankful. I want to thank God for bringing me this far. I want to thank Mr. Davis for his vision that I would have a place at 63 years old to come and live in a beautiful establishment that this is. I mean, I am so grateful I want to thank Ms. his wife, Miss Catherine. The woman is, I, I, I just can't say, she, she's awesome. <laughs> you know, anything wrong around here, if anything, I can talk to her and I can ask her, she's going to give me a straight answer. They was there for me. Asked me did I need anything, furniture or anything. They was there for me. I want to thank the housing manager of this apartment. She has been awesome in everything about this building when it comes to the tenants. She's very, very helpful. And I just love her to death, because I really do. And for the Bayview Community Multipurpose Center, I want to thank Ms. Kimberly Carter because she made this possible for me. 
She did the paperwork, a lot of it. She made sure I went and got birth certificates and everything that I needed. She stayed on me and, to get it. And I want to thank her for that. I want to thank everybody that had something to do with Dr. Davis' vision. This place is beautiful. I don't plan on leaving this place for a while. <laughs> I'm thankful. God is so good, so good. Like I, I was born here in Hunters Point, born and raised, born in San Francisco General Hospital in 1953. I've lived in the Bayview all my life. And I'm seeing a lot of changes. Good things are happening. And I want to say God bless each and every one of you. And y'all have a blessed day. And enjoy our lovely building. <laughs> I love it. Our lovely building. That was <laughs> well, that was fabulous. Uh, one, of, one of the very first, on the very first day that the permit was done. And uh, he lives here already. And I got to tell you that the reference made uh, to the neighbors who provided uh, some move-in kits that Malia referred to. You ought to see those move-in kits. If Kathy had been looking the other way, I was going to leave with one of them the other day. <laughs> and Beverly, you're coming this way, and I'm going to give you the microphone. Another one of the residents does something with the senior center. This one's better? Here. To the eloquent staff of the political arena, God bless you. To all of my sisters and brothers, God bless you. We are here today because not only was there a dream, but there was a vision. And from the vision, here's the reality. And it was only a reality because there was a God who saw fit and decided it was time for Bellevue Hunters Point to really come alive and enjoy some of the benefits that others are enjoying other places. And it was done through a man who was compassionate, kind, spirited, concerned, who knew the road would be rough and would get tough, but he could travel it because he had an arm barrier. He had the law to carry him along the way. And because of that, his spirit looks over us today to look at this beautiful edifice that has been built. And this is in memory of Dr. Joyce Davis. And we want to thank the Lord for giving Joyce Davis, Kathy Davis. Because beside every good man, there is a better woman. And because of Kathy, his dream is now a reality. And seniors, let me tell you something. Thank the maker. He's blessing you. And you need to be thankful for Kathy, for the board, for the people up here on the platform, and for the government for looking out for you. Now, we need to go to the polls and vote we need to get out of these houses, get away from the television, and let's get out and do our job now. We just got started, and we're not going to stop. Let's get together and go to work. For those of you who do not know, she ran a training program for Bernie Sanders.
Reverend Ball, we're almost ready to do the ribbon cutting, but we would be remiss in our duties in our community. We open with prayer, and we will close with prayer. From the Bayview Senior Center, Reverend Ball. Amen, everybody. One of the things I would like to do, first of all, um, it's almost impossible to thank everybody. There's a couple of people names that wasn't called that I'd like to call out and, and really thank them for their contributions. Uh, Miss LaShawn Walker, Leola Bridges, Mr. Al Williams. You see, a lot of times to accomplish great things, it takes people to do a lot of little things. And if we missed anybody, because we know that every effort that you put forth from the staff, from the politicians, your prayers, everything makes a difference. And we want to take this time to thank you. Give yourself a round of applause. Well, we're going to pray now. Father God, first of all, we want to thank you for the vision. We want to thank you for the visionary. We want to thank you because we know that it's only because of you that that vision was fulfilled. Father God, right now as we go to cut this ribbon, Father God, we know that this is a, a great accomplishment, but we know that you've given a vision that's a lot bigger than that. Father God, we know that you've given a vision of an aging campus. We know that you've given a vision that things change for seniors in the San Francisco Bay Area area. And we know that this day, on this day, we're going to be rejoicing because the best is yet to come. Father God, we started with one building, but we know that you have allowed us and gave us the courage to see more. And we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And Father God, continue to bless and love each and every last one. Amen. And now, if you will, those of you who have been part of this ceremony, I believe the ribbon cutting is about to occur. And if you will simply follow the lead provided by Kathy Davis, as we all should do.